We're given quite a bit of information in this graph, but the most important thing to notice about it is that it is not a graph of f, but rather a graph of f prime. In addition to what is explicitly represented in the graph, I've also added in these dotted blue lines to indicate where there's a horizontal tangent line. And over to the right, I've noted that they give us that f of 8 equals 4, and that f is a twice differentiable function. Information that's going to be useful for this problem includes an understanding of the fundamental theorem of calculus and how it relates derivatives and integrals, as well as information about how to find local minima in a, an open interval and absolute minimum, an absolute minimum in a closed interval. And we'll have to be using the chain rule in a somewhat abstract manner. So I've reproduced that there at the bottom right. So let's go ahead and get started with part A. I'm trying to find where local minima occur on the open interval from 0 to 8. Now that only happens where the derivative changes sign from negative to positive. It's often remembered as a shortcut, if you will, by students that it's where the derivative is 0, but that's not uh, sufficient evidence that you've found either a local minima or a local maximum, for that matter. And so Again, remembering that this is a graph of f prime, not of f. Okay? And so the height here on this graph represents the value of the derivative of the function f. And so all we're really being asked to find is where does the height change sign from negative to positive. And that's going to be right here in this region. Okay? So I'm going to write, because f prime is represented in the graph, we look for places where it changes from positive to negative height. And that occurs only at x equals 6. B is asking a slightly different question, namely where do we find the absolute minimum and what is that value on the closed interval? So we need to include the endpoints. Okay. So we'll just write that the absolute value, the absolute rather minimum, on this closed interval 0 to 8 occurs at endpoints. or at x equals 6. Okay, so first let's start with at x equals 0. Now we need to find the value of f. And remember, f is not shown in this diagram. So, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we're going to have to integrate or accumulate the signed area underneath the f prime curve plus adding in some initial condition. The initial condition we have is that f of 8 equals 4. So to find f of 0, 
we start at f of 8, and then we have to do the integral. Notice that I'm going from 8 to 0, which is counter to the ordinary direction of f prime of x dx. And so that is 4 plus, now, what is the area as I go from 8 to 6? What is the signed area? It's negative 7. Now, what is the signed area from 6 to 4? It is positive 3. Now, what is the signed area from 4 to 1? It is negative 6. And then I finally add the signed area from 1 to 0, which is negative 2. So I get a total value for f of 0 of 4 minus 7, negative 3, plus 3 is 0, minus 6, minus 2, I get negative 8. Okay, so this is b continued. Now I need to find f at 6. f at 6 is going to equal f at 8 plus the integral. Notice I'm going the opposite of the ordinary direction of f prime of x dx from 8 to 6. Again, that's going to be 4 plus negative 7, or negative 3. And finally, f of 8, we're given as 4. So, we're simply being asked to select the absolute minimum from these three candidates. And so that's clearly going to be f at 0. is negative 8. And remember, when they ask for the absolute minimum, unless they act, ask for the location, we simply report the height. Okay, part C wants to know where in the open interval the graph is concave down and increasing. Rather, the graph of F is concave down and increasing. Increasing means f prime is positive. Concave down means f double prime is negative. So let's just write that out. f increasing is equivalent to this to saying that f prime is greater than 0. And f concave down is equivalent to saying f double prime is less than 0. f prime is the height of the graph. f double prime is the slope to the tangent line of the graph. And so both conditions are met. Where? Well, here we've got positive height and negative slope. So from 0 to 1. And here also from 3 to 4 we have positive height and negative slope. Uh, x 0 to 1 and x, sorry, not at 0 but rather 
x from 3 to 4. Finding part D, see if we can squeeze this in. Okay. G is f of x cubed, and so g prime of x, applying this chain rule, is 3 times f of x, the quantity squared, times f prime of x. They want that entire expression evaluated at 3. And so, let's see, we have g prime of 3 equals 3 times. Now, what about f of 3? Fortunately, f of 3 is given to us as negative 5 halves, which will square. And then f prime of 3, we can read directly from the graph, is 4. So we have, uh, let's see, 12 times 25 over 4, or 3 times 25, and that's uh, 75. This problem operated without any units, so we'll just leave it at that.